Hi, David Bizard here, and you are watching Paratech 10. Give me 20 minutes or so of your time, and I will pass on to you the benefits of my 60 plus years of race engine building. Winning race engine building, that is. Our subject here is another episode of Mission Impossible. What I'm going to cover here are the first steps towards modifying the crank to A, reduce its moment of inertia, and B, allow it to cut through the air oil mix in the crankcase easier, thus reducing the windage. So this is the first steps of putting grinder to crank. In case you're wondering what those lumps are on the journal side of the crank that I've indicated with the arrows, they are machining location pads. They serve no useful purpose once the crank's been made, so you can safely remove those with no negative effects. Each one of those pads is going to be about the same as taking 30 grams off the rod big end. We've got two pads there, so that's equivalent to 60. That's going to reduce the bob weight we use for balancing even further. You see these holes here go right the way through the big end. Now, you may assume that the factory puts those holes in to lighten it. Well, yes they do, but that's not the only reason. When Rolls-Royce were developing the crank for the Merlin, they found the fatigue resistance increased when they drilled the big ends like this. However, that's not the primary reason, although it's probably part of it, that Chrysler put these in. To really make these work, you need to radius these here. That sharp edge partially defeats the purpose. So that's what we're going to do as well in this round. Also, we're going to clean up stuff like this. It's not needed. As for a grinder, I'm using this here. Now, this barrel was pretty well priced. I've had it a little while, haven't used it a lot. It seems to work great. I got this for about 35 bucks. However, Harbor Freight has a grinder that Todd at Project Farm said was yeah, worth the money. Uh, it's the cheapest they've got. It's either 15 or $19. I can't remember which now. If you don't have one of these, that's the grinder to get. Get yourself a wheel like that. That's going to be about 8 to $9. So, let's get cracking here. Here's the areas of the crank that I'm going to work on first. The lumps on the big end edge, I've already uh, discussed that. But those areas that are at this point on top of the crank don't contribute anything to the strength of the crank so they're coming off as well they won't make much difference to the moment of inertia because they're close to the center but there's no point in carrying any weight that you don't have to carry now i've had time to look at this crank and uh, give it a more detailed evaluation i think there's more that can be taken off safely than i had originally anticipated I'm expecting that by the time we've finished, we'll be well in excess of five pounds off the crank. And the moment of inertia will probably be about 10 to 15% less. That's going to be good. This engine will pick up RPM much quicker than it did before. So that you can better see what I'm doing here, and how much to take off, I'm going to do it all in stages and show you where I'm at on that particular area of the crank. So, in a moment, I'll have finished grinding this bit here and we'll take a look and see how it appears. There's still a step over the far side, arrow, but you can see the form that I'm generating as it approaches the radius on the rod journal. I suspect many of you are asking yourself the question, how long does it take to grind up a crank to the spec that we're going to do here? 
Well, to be honest, it is not a quick job. You can figure it takes about as long as porting two cast iron heads. However, the results are very satisfying. You'll end up with a semi-race crank and your cost for it will be a grinding wheel and emery roll which you can source out of your Goodson head grinding and porting kit. You're watching me grind this part of the crank in real time. About now I've been working on it about 90 seconds. So if you want to hang on just for a minute or so, you will see what it looks like and be able to better assess how fast the metal is being removed. As you can see in a moment, the lump has largely gone. Now it's a question of roughing out another part of the crank. Here I've rotated the crank about 15 degrees from the last shot. And what I'm showing here is the removal of the boss at the side of the big end journal and the tidying up of the radius over the top of the journal itself. Now let's deal with the area around the hole, or I should say holes, as each of the big end journals has been bored in the manner you see here. Initially, I'd use a carbide cutter to remove the meat of the metal that has to come off. Now, after that, it's a question of using a grinding wheel and M rolls. What you see here is about the extent that I would use the cutter on. Note that, as I'm indicating here, more material comes off the bottom of the hole, that's nearest the centre of the crank, than at the top. There's plenty of metal that can be ground out at the bottom, but at the top the radius needs to be limited to about an eighth of an inch. Next, using a ball wheel, as you see here, I go over the edges of the hole and blend them in to the face or the cheek of the crank as effectively as possible at this stage of the game. This series of shots here should show pretty much where I'm going with this. The big deal here is to make sure that the, the face of the crank, that's the face that's facing us, blends very smoothly into the hole. That gives us the best stress fatigue resistance. So that's an area where we need to regard everything we do as important. Well, here is how the hole is dressed. Big radius here. You can take quite a bit off here because the metal's thick right through there. A small radius here, about an eighth of an inch radius. All of this corner here has been blended. Now, I've really worked on this half of the uh, um, crank here, this half of the uh, throw, and I've cut this here to give you an idea of the windage. Eventually we've got to cut this all the way around here. All this comes off and it will be knife edged right down to about here. A recent phone call with a professor friend of mine now retired, uh, prompted me to look into our connecting rod lightning and try and establish what the minimum radii and thicknesses would be for a rod capable of holding a 550 gram piston at 7500 made of this material. That 
led me to reassess our lightning here and that's just what I'm doing here now. So an already light rod is getting further lightning. Uh, here's the setup I'm using for doing that and the rod in question here is the one I showed you as a finished rod. So it's going to go from light to even lighter. I'm guessing probably about 45 grams lighter. Now I know it looks like I'm cutting the material off absolutely no problem whatsoever but I had that's that rod's made of tough material and I had to get a tungsten carbide cutter to do the job so that was $75 just for the cutter but as you can see the finish on it is great I think all in all the rods going to end up about 50 grams lighter than we had originally projected so we're gonna have a tough lightweight rod here. okay back to the crank what I'm going to do now is remove metal from the area that I'm just indicating here. Take that entire corner off. So, let's get cracking on that. Because we're grinding on an area that is easy to slip and damage the uh, journal there, what I do there is take a bearing shell, such as you see here, and tape it into position to protect that journal. We're now in a position to attack that corner I've, we've just looked at. And uh, here is approximately how we are going to grind it. That's with the angle grinder. The next part of reshaping this, I am going to do with a carbide burr. That leaves it looking like this. Now, before we go any further, I would like to remind all of you that have stuck with this video so far that Mission Impossible is an effort on behalf of Uncle Tony, Andy and myself, plus some others that are out in the right and left wing, to raise money for St. Jude's. Now, we have had some people get in touch with me who have lost children. I know exactly how they feel, having lost one myself. So, what they've done, since we're not set up yet, but we will be soon, to take via YouTube um, donations to St. Jude's, they've gone and donated on their own. I must admit, I'm very impressed with the fact that some of them have donated pretty large sums of money, and I'm talking about pretty hefty three-figure numbers. So, even if you're not interested in the raffle, there's plenty of opportunity for you to donate directly to St. Jude's. As far as the raffle is concerned, we want as many people to be able to enroll for that raffle. And it's not set up yet, but getting the maximum amount of people is going to rely on every one of you subscribing to put our subscription numbers up and our notification numbers so that when the raffle comes time to be held, we have plenty of people on board ready to spend whatever a cost of a raffle ticket is, say $10, I don't know exactly yet, but that would probably be it. And all of that money is going to St. Jude's. Now, I'm putting in a lot of time with this. Charlie's putting in a lot of his time doing cylinder heads for me and Uncle Tony is supporting us and Andy is putting in his share of the work especially on the induction side so this is costing us between us thousands of dollars of work time to do this we need to justify that by raising more money than what we are investing in the project right we don't make anything out of this it goes to St. Jude's. So please subscribe, notify, share, and do whatever you can to spread the word. You will be helping to save a child. Now I know a lot of you are gonna say, well, just how much weight have we saved? Well, let's take a look at that. 
Here on the scales is the crank. Now you can see we've gone from exactly 55 pounds, if you go back to one of the earlier episodes it shows us being weighed, we've lost 0.8 of a pound. Now, at first that might not seem like a lot, but it's all, but most of it, at least 50% of it, has come off on the big end journal side, which means probably at least 30% of that weight has got to come off the counterweight side to even up the score. That is not including what we've saved for piston weight and rod weight. This is all bonus so far. So I'm going to make a new estimate here. I'm thinking we are going to get as much as six pounds off this crank. That brings us to the end of this episode. In a future episode, you will see me cutting more of the crank and doing more work on the rods and whatever else. Oh, and by the way, Icon has sent me the pistons for the project. That is their contribution to help St. Jude's. Thank you all for watching. Mm -hmm.